Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Welcome, Coach. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And happy morning. belated birthday. I know it's two weeks ago, but happy birthday. God bless you, Thank coach. you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. How is everything? Where are you right now in Rostock? Um, no yeah, I'm in uh, Rostock, Germany, mm -hmm. uh, uh, northern northern part of Germany uh, near the Baltic Sea, mm -hmm. uh, about two hours north of Berlin. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's very So I'm at the top, north. top. Yeah. It's very cool, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you were there since March, right? Yeah, since March of um, 2020. But you guys didn't have a season yet, right? If no, not yet. Season. Okay. How not are yet. things working out now with COVID? How is um, the situation? It's been it's been pretty good for us um, and our team and our organization. We've been we've been um, really good up here. Um, you know, we've been blessed to not experience high cases of COVID. Um, so we've always been underneath that um, you know that that alert level. Um, so a lot of things kind of been a little bit open here as far as practicing we've we've been able to do different things than uh, others um, due to our um, our region and our government here so it's been really good wow okay so you think the season is going to start for you guys um i believe so i think so i think um you know I, you know from what i know um i know that the gfl and robert hoover and the organization as far as the whole league um, has made a lot of um, steps to get this season pro to progress. So I'm pretty hopeful. Um, the season the schedule just dropped like the other day. So um, I think that everyone's making a push to start this 2021 season off. Perfect. Perfect. So tell me more about you. I, I, I've seen you played. You tried to go into the league in the NFL, the CFL. You made also your career was long. So tell me, yeah, where did it started and what age, which country, which position? Okay, um, so it started really, man, like uh, when I was about four, three or four years old, um, playing street ball. Um, originally from Bakersfield, California. Uh, I grew up, you know, my, my dad, my older, my older brother, they always played. And so that kind of uh, drive and, 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 you know, intensity of the, for the game has always been there for me. Um, I, my first year playing organized football was when I was five years old, though. Wow. Um, I played and I was a running back at first. Um, and then I, my second year playing was in my tackle football years and I was like seven. And they immediately moved me to a quarterback. And, um, you know, from, from there, I played in Bakersfield since I was, till I was 12. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up moving to Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and then I stayed there until I was 15. Played football the whole entire time. Uh, played with some, some NFL guys that, that were at the time, you know, still young. But, you know, they kind of grew up and in, in been to the NFL. I uh, had about three or four guys on my team that, that played in the NFL in, in mm -hmm. park ball in high school. Um, then I ended up going back to California, um, mm -hmm. finished up my high school ball, where, again, played with uh, two to three uh, NFL guys that were on that team. Um, and then I ended up going and getting a scholarship to Ball State University. Um, at Ball State, um, of course, got to experience some guys that, that made it to the NFL but I ended up transferring after one year and I went back to junior college um, because I, I basically found myself in a situation where they wanted me to change positions from quarterback to receiver. Um, so I said, no, that's not a go for me. And I ended up going to a junior college, uh, finished my junior college years. And then I ended up going to a division two school by the name of New Mexico Highlands, where I finished uh, two times uh, Division two All American quarterback. Um, from oh. there, yeah, from there, of course, I went and uh, um, to the CFL. I had a mini camp with Mon Montreal Alouettes. Mm. Um, I was in negotiations with uh, Calgary Stampede, um, and none of those things kind of fell through for me. And uh, I remember finding myself just on the couch. I think 2000, I want to say two, yeah, 2014, 2015, uh, and one of my buddies by the name of EJ, EJ Woods, he was actually playing out here in Taft, Finland. 
at the time. And he calls me up and he was like, Hey bro, you know, you need to, you need to get out here. You know what I mean? It's, it's cool. This is definitely something for you. You'll, you'll do great out here. And I said, nah, you know, I'm like, ah, you know, what's the point? You know, it's like, if it's not an NFL or CFL contract, I'm not doing it. And so, um, long story short, he ends up making me a Euro players. And, um, you know, next thing you know, I'm getting signed to the Frankfurt universe or galaxy at the time. Yeah. And, um, you know, we go undefeated and, um, you know, here I am now, you know, I've, I've traveled a lot of t- places. I've traveled. Um, I played at Marburg, uh, coached at Belarus, Minsk, Belarus, coached in, in Istanbul, Turkey, Amsterdam, oh. Crusaders, uh, Ingolstadt Dukes, uh, Prague, Black Panthers. And now I am here at the Rostock Griffins. So, kind of been all over the place a um long way, right? yeah <laughs> so it's a long it's a long rap you know what i mean <laughs> that was maybe two minutes right there so. <laughs> <laughs> wow don't don't you miss playing yeah i do i do i do miss playing i do um but i'm you know for me i miss playing but you know, I'm 33. I just turned recently turned turned 33. I've been retired for about two years now, and you know what happens is your body doesn't recover from a game. You know, it takes longer for my body to recover. You know, and I hated the feeling of kind of like getting my body back to you know good enough to play, and then that that same day I feel good. The same day I'm getting beat up again. You know, <laughs> and then it's that whole process again. It, and it was like, you know what? I'm just not getting paid enough for this. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I was like, man, I'm not getting paid enough to get hurt like this, man. This is this is crazy. No. So, yeah. yeah. How was it uh, as a black quarterback in the States? Because before you had Garen Holly on it, um, and he told me it was very different. Even even Mili Mosquito said it was different as a Mexican. They treated him differently. They're yeah. like, yeah, you can't play quarterback because you're people of color. How was it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, um, you know, I'll be honest. It's, it, it, it's, I've always had a, you know, I always say, you know, quarterback is, is pretty much the, the most ultimate, it's the ultimate uh, position and it's the most competitive. Um, you know, day in and day out, you're going to compete. Um, white, brown, or black, whatever, you know what I mean? Um, you're going to compete. And I would say that, you know, I, I had a, a pretty kind of different journey because I had some, you know, my first start off was I was with black coaches, you know, and, and so it really wasn't like, oh, well, this, mm-hmm. you know, the race differences or whatever. Um, and so, you know, growing up since I was five, six years old, seven years old, I was playing quarterback. So I've only played quarterback my whole entire life. Um, I didn't really start to see that because at the same time, when I went to Atlanta, Georgia at 12 years old, it's nothing but black people in Atlanta, you know? So when I went there, it was like, you know, no true race, white or black. But the yeah. first time me seeing this was probably experiencing it in uh, high school when I moved back to California. Mm. And um, it was a guy, he was there before me. I ended up transferring in and, you know, I remember, you know, competing and, and my coach at the time, uh, he, he wasn't, you know, looking at color or anything. He was looking really for the best man. So again, I was kind of lucky there because I was, you know, I represented the best, but the, the, you know, I would say I had struggled with always having to do more, if that makes sense. Like yeah. I couldn't just be good. You know what I mean? I yeah. couldn't be just good enough. I had to, you know, had to over exceed the things I had to, you know, go maybe 80%. I maybe had to go 90% out of something. Um, it was no room for error. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, as I went to college, I think it set in more because at that level, you know, you're getting more, um, you're getting more players, you know, that of other races that are, you know, pretty much as good as you, um, if not better. And so this, this part kind of comes in where, you do, me doing the right things off the field and on the field, you know? Mm. Um, but I couldn't really say that it was, it was truly difficult for me. Um, I, I can say that, you know, I always had to, to feel like I've always had to be an overachiever with it. Um, mm. But for me, that just made it better because I'm a competitive person and it just made me go, made me go harder. So. 
Yeah. Mm. Wow. And how about um, in your coaching coaching career? Have you there noticed any any racism or differences or whatever? Because you've been uh, Germany, Finland, whatever, and we know majority of the people are white. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, it, it has been, um, you know, but, you know, I, I could say that, um, you know, a lot of the times the people that I've been uh, acquainted with, they know me, they know my passion for the game. Um, and so I've, I've, you know, it's similar to what my, where my playing career um, was. Oh, sorry, my, <laughs> let me put my charger on. <laughs> <laughs> But um, it's kind of similar to, um, you know, my playing career in that sense where, um, one second. Don't it's break it. Four. Yeah. <laughs> one second. Yeah, so similar to, to my playing experience, um, you know, I, I, I kind of, um, you know, definitely have to go above and beyond. And it, it's, it's kind of difficult in some situations. You, you probably don't have the, is the same amount of opportunities, um, but those ones that you do have, I think that you definitely have to present yourself a bit differently. You know, you, you, know, you have to kind of be an overachiever uh, in, this, in this sense. But again, you know, the guys that I've um, been able to kind of connect with um, has really been there to kind of help me along the way. You know what I mean? And I, and I have to thank my mentors. I have to thank those guys that, that are working behind the scenes and, and vouching for my character, vouching for my knowledge and IQ as a coach, um, because I think that a lot of these, these guys are talking amongst each other. And I've had some, some, some guys that were white that are, I know that are vouching for me, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I would definitely say that, you know, without these guys, um, I possibly would have a more difficult time of getting around and, and getting connections, you know? So, yeah. Mm. Nice, nice. So you've been to, where have you been? In Germany, Finland, States, of course. Which Europe country also? Is it? Uh, so, yeah, so as far as playing or coaching or just in both, general? Both, both, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I've contracted in Germany, Holland or Netherlands, uh, Minsk, Belarus, Prague, Czech Republic, uh, oh. Turkey, um, yeah, in America. And that's, that's, that's all. So I, I played in Finland, but I wasn't contracted by a team in Finland, but okay. we did play against Wausau Royals okay. uh, while I was at the, the Panthers. I mean, when I was at the Crusaders, um, played in Vienna or Austria, uh, played in Poland, had a coaching job in Poland, but I, I, you know, I pretty much was there for three months and then I just left. Uh, yeah. You know, I was a national team coach of Spain, uh, mm -hmm. 2018. So yeah, it's about, you know, six or seven countries that I've, you know, pretty much have been, you know, contracted or organized. How can you, know, you leave Spain something. and go to the North of Germany? It's, you know, uh, it's way warmer there, I bet. And the people are more warm, more kind. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> the northern, the nor northern eastern Germans are yeah. a bitch. Uh, you know, I always tell people, they like, you know, people always say like, uh, you know, these people are just, they're distance. And I'm just like, I love the fact that they're distance. I don't really like people all in my mix. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. You know, for me, this is a perfect kind of place. There are um, new mix, but from the distance. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. You know, keep your space. I keep mine and we just do our thing. And and, and that's fine. You know, for me, I, I love it. Um, but, you know, Spain, like you said, man, it's a warm culture. I uh, love it. You know, the, the people there are very, very uh, energetic, very uh, charismatic. Um, you know, and, and these guys, of course, have great food and, and the weather is always nice and, you know, things of that nature. So, you know, I love Spain. Unfortunately, I never, you know, the, the, the level of Spain football isn't the highest. Mm. So, you know, being in Germany, 
in, you know, in Finland and Austria and, you know, cer certain places, you kind of have like a better feel of football uh, competition wise, you know, uh, economically, you know, so forth and so on. You, you kind of get a little bit more benefits uh, mm. being in Germany. So um, sticking around here in Germany is definitely key for me, uh, especially when it comes to football. Mm. Mm. Uh, what is for you the biggest difference um, kind uh, like football mentality, football, the football culture? What is the biggest difference from all these countries? What are the pros and cons? Like where would you say if you build a new organization without America, where would it be and why? And why is it better than the others? I got you. That's a good question. That's a good question. I like that. Uh, man, it, it, it was it, it's going to be pretty interesting, but I would have to say, man, um, it would have to be either, you know, out of my experience, what I've what I've seen, it would have to be like either uh, minks or turkey, and and I really? tell you why, yeah, 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 and I tell you why because I felt like, you know, when I was there, these guys, you know, I really saw the 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 true attitude of football in these guys. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Uh, that tough, tenacious. You know what I mean? Aggressive, uh, you know, just get shit done type of people. You know what I mean? Um, I would say, the, the, you know, the, the the eastern side of, of Europe is, is is a bit, you know, less, it's less, a little bit less unfortunate when it comes to economically. And, you know, growing up, you know, in the poor environment that I grew up in, you know, that you, you kind of de develop that hunger, right? You yeah. kind of get that anger from within. Um, as I see, you know, I would say definitely by far Germany has probably the most overall talent and knowledge of the game just because they have more exposure to it yeah. with all the American bases and things of that nature. The culture is kind of just submitted here. But, you know, if I had to just go as far as personality wise, yeah, it would be a mixture between Belarus and, and, uh, and Turkey because it was guys out there, you know, that were, you know, especially in Minx, you know, these guys were pretty damn rough you know what I mean and you know you'll see a guy get smacked and he'll just get up and look at you and like let's do it again you know mm. um and that 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 sense of just you know persistence and and determination to get things done and, and the hard work and the grind like I said that attitude to just punch you in the mouth every time you can uh I really seen that displayed in in those countries um so if I had to really go by the the true question of just kind of like attitude and mentality i would say those 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 countries for sure oh never expected but i understand completely what you mean like austrians and germans like yeah they know football they, they know how they know everything they had good coaches american coaches but i know what you mean they're not like yeah they are spoiled let's say that they're, yes, they're spoiled. Exactly. yeah they're exactly. spoiled kids yeah <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> They, you know, the, the 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 Western the Western European countries, they're just kind of like like you said, they're spoiled. Yeah, they're they playing they're, they're football because it's cool. To certain yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They're they're like, yeah, that's my hobby. And people, even if even if there is no pro league, I guess people in those countries they play like they feel like they have to play. <laughs> right, 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 <laughs> right. They're getting something off their chest. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. And, and I loved it. I loved it. It was it was really cool to experience that. Um, in, in those two countries that I, that I coached mm. um, I heard bad things about the GFL from Stephen Parker and, uh, <laughs> and <laughs> Coach Mele. <laughs> they told me like um, they would never come back to the to the GFL except Stephen Parker said except he can choose um, his coaching staff and he has nothing to do with the GMs or sponsors or anything he just want to know his coaching staff what is your take on the GFL right now are you happy with everything how it's going right now or do you think there's a lot of room for improvement or just a little things they should change? yeah i i think that um quite honestly it's a lot of room of improvement from 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 the top um all the way to the bottom um to, to coaches to organizations to the whole entire league um and i and i you know Coach Parker being a, a mentor of mine, Coach Mele being a being a guy of uh, of acquaintance, and you know we kind of come underneath that partner uh, Parker Rain. Um, that's what we both have in common, and um, you know I, I would say that uh, you know they they're definitely they have points there. Um, 
And I would say that, you know, from the top, I would love for the organization to, to truly, you know, work on the professionalism of it and the, the marketing and, and, and just, you know, the, the visual side of it, you know what I mean? Um, I think now where we're at in this world, you know, visuals are everything, you know, we, we can't continue to have, you know, visuals that are outdated maybe 10 years ago, you know what I mean? 20 years yeah. ago, um, you know, that GFL is no longer, I mean, as much as they want that to kind of still be their, their, you know, their, their foundation, mm -hmm. a lot of these guys are now done. They're old guys. You know what I mean? These guys are 45 plus 50 plus. Yeah. Um, so we got to let bygones be bygones and we have to continue to, you know, innovate and be, you know, involved the game, you know, and involve the, you know, rebranding the, the image of the GFL itself um, and, and renovate it, you know, um, as far as the coaches goes, you know, I, I, you know, as far as the, the per, like the organizations and teams go, um, I'll be honest, I've had some situations where I've been in some shitty ass situations, man. And, and, you know, I, just for the disclosure, I, I don't really want to, you know, <laughs> say the, the teams because I'm still in the GFL, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh, but, uh, if you follow my track record, then you'll know, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not much of a, you know, a big track record, but I mean, I've been, I've been put out, you know, like this. You know, just mm. from one day to the next, uh, no transition, no, no true reason and then just released, um, you know, obtaining an injury and just, you know, kind of make the following week. I'm getting shipped off, um, wow. you know, yeah, you know, kind of getting getting blackballed and, and, and just kind of, you know, out of a team that that, that I that I, you know, help generate certain things and aspects and, you know, just get them to the point. Um, and, you know, it's, 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 it's those things that, you know, you, you sit there and you watch and you look back and like, wow, we did all this stuff, but we don't get no appreciation. You know what I mean? And I think that, you know, that's the biggest thing. And, you know, one thing about Americans coming over playing football, and I always tell these guys, I always tell guys when I'm recruiting them, it's like, hey, this isn't, this isn't anything like what you've ever experienced. This isn't football <laughs> in college. It's, you know, you don't, you don't have the locker room. You don't have a lot of things. You, know? you don't have the family as an import. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, don't, you don't have that. You don't have that. You're pretty much on your own. Uh, if you do get a buddy or two, that's great. But you're really but a free man. And, and, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 things are, and things are, you know, you don't have a locker room. You don't have the right gear. You don't have any type of game day preparation. You know, sometimes you won't have anybody that tape your ankles. Uh -huh. I mean, so from 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 team to team, it's definitely uh, a big difference. And I will say, it's not every team in the GFL, but majority of the teams from in the GFL are pretty understaffed, um, under underdeveloped, and undercoached. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, you just don't have a lot of the qualities that that you need to really truly. Uh, uh, be a better football player, you know what I mean? So I would love to see that. I, I will say, honestly, where I'm at right now, Rostock has, has definitely, out of all the experiences that I've been, has been the best experience I've ever had in mm -hmm. Germany. Um, and, and you know, it's, it's wild that I say that because you would think that this is my third or fourth team that I've been yeah. a part of. And, you know, I would say, like, this is they do it all the right way. You know, um, I have to always give a shout out to Jens the president of the team, Rostock Griffins, uh, and our head coach, Coach Brown, because these guys are really running it like a professional organization. Um, you know, things are on time, you know, like for example, payment, you know, people that we, we come out here to get paid and we come to play. And it's been sometimes where I, I didn't get paid in three weeks. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here like, what the heck is going on? Like, you know, yeah. isn't this my contract? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, if, if for the American guys, you know, watching this, or if you do see this, you know, definitely make sure that all your things in your contract are, are, are taken care of. I mean, you know, seriously, like really, really, really harp on these things and say, hey, you said that I'll get this, you said I'll get that, you said you'll do this. And where is this at? Because the thing about it, if you don't speak up, one week will go by, two weeks will go by, three weeks will go by, two months will go by, and then all of a sudden you're almost two months late on your checks. Um, and I've seen that, I've seen that. I've had in trouble with my visa. A team was supposed to get my visa, never got my visa. I thought it was okay for me to travel. I ended up getting stuck. 
I got stuck at the border of Slovenia and Croatia, bro. Like it was, it, I slept outside, literally. I slept outside and I almost, and I was so mad. It was my first year out here oh, and I was so mad. I was coming straight from America and you know, my attitude you definitely like, has changed. This place. <laughs> yeah, my attitude definitely has changed because you know, most Americans, we just hot firecracker off the head. You know what I mean? We running our mouths. And I remember getting stuck out there and I'm going off at the patrol guy. I'm like, F you, this, that, and all the crazy stuff. And he's just kind of looking at me like, dude, like, you, you know where you're at right now. You'd like, you can just be pushed out of the, off the side of the edge and no one would know, you know? So I kind of calmed myself down and I was like, you know what? I need to reevaluate this whole situation <laughs> and get the hell out of here. <laughs> it's bad, it's bad. Yeah, oh, it's really bad with the import situation. Um, I remember with the cowboys, um, um, JC Craig, he he's uh, I, I love when coaches give everything what they have and they have more heart than any business ideas or whatever. Um, yeah. and I remember driving out to Munich, I met JC Craig here in Vienna. I had no idea what was this business here in Vienna, anyways. And he told me like his running bag is hurt, da 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 da, and I should come play. And uh, the first thing he started, he's like, "But I can't pay you. I can <laughs> like, what? like it's so bad." He's like, "Yeah, we have some imports, but I can't pay nothing." And I'm like, "I'm young. I'm like, I just want to play. I don't care. Right. Right. Like people are treating me here bad in Austria. I'm just gonna play." And but he's like, "I can't." Uh, da da da. And if you want to stay in Munich, we have like I don't know room for three imports. Like <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, but you got to you got share a room, two to a room, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. But I had a friend in Munich, so it was all good. But still, the traveling because I had to work, so I was coming back to Austria. Wow. So, yeah. That's, 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 a, that's a lot, man. That's dedication right there. Yeah, I lost a lot of money and people yeah. still don't respect me. It's really bad, I swear. I'm yeah. sorry. For you to be in Germany, I swear, Austria is worse. People hate me for saying that, but Austria is worse than Germany. I love Austria. I love Vienna. Yeah. But still. I yeah, swear, yeah. Germany. Is I got to, I got to experience it a little bit. I, we played <laughs> when I was at Prague Black Panthers. We played in the AFL league, mm. and I, so I got to experience a bit of it. But I will say, just for the, yeah, <laughs> just for the, just for the, just for a good publicity, the AFL. I I always say that the AFL and the Polish league do great a great job at marketing their their their. Uh, their league, I really do. Um, mm -hmm. Their 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 visuals and their TVs and their updates on the stats and standings of stuff and rankings, they do a tremendous job doing that. And I think that that's what fans, when you want to attract those fans, this is how you attract these fans. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I and this is what I said, you know, earlier about the GFL wishing that they could kind of implement is just you know the rankings from week to week have it updated you know it's, it's times where three or four weeks go by and then you don't know who the leading rusher is or the leading passer is and then all of a sudden it's like two different dudes and like oh okay <laughs> so yeah you know but i definitely understand though i, I definitely know that the afl and the austrians can definitely be yeah but they're good but they're good yeah. my current head coach stefan pokorny he's like he took over the dragons i think two years ago and he's 100% in it. He is like 100% yeah. in it. But um, to be honest, um, I think it still needs some years to be like he wanted to be. And I guess money also in the AFL. I guess money is a yeah. big mistake. Because you have one import, one quarterback, but he already lives here. And <clears throat> he settled here. But he's, I think, yeah, he's also from California, Chad Jeffries. But yeah, I know Chad. Chad, yeah. Chad was uh Chad took my place where I was at Marburg. Really? Ah, yeah, yeah. He's a, he's so a when, when I when I was leaving Marburg, Chad was coming in. So I, I you know, I, I I'm not gonna say I mentored Chad, but you know, I was I was you know a little bit. I'm a little bit older than him, and you know, I was already the starting quarterback. So I kind of like, you know, just kind of gave him the ranks because I knew I wasn't gonna play anymore. And um, <laughs> you know, Chad is a great guy, all around guy, yeah. on and off the field. So yeah. I know Chad. What's up, Chad? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's going to be the next one on the show. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but yeah, but they're working, they're doing a very great job. 
I think, in the right direction. But let's see how it goes. I have no idea. Because in Austria, you know, we had Shuan Fatah, who was one of the best coaches, but he's also now gone. The yeah. thing, and I don't know, with the Vikings, I have no idea. I have no, I have no idea. You never know with the Vikings, man. They no, they no. run their they run their organization like like a man like a like the mafia like or cult. something, man. Yeah, you, like a cult. You're not, yeah, you're not gonna yeah, you're not gonna know nothing until they get they you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. More, much much respect to what they do, but you know, dealing with them is is definitely tough. Like it's, it's different, really yeah. Tough. And every yeah. year it's it's different. And sometimes they play like very good, some Other some other games that like like it's just the same team. Yeah, it's exactly. weird. Changed over the years. Yeah, changed yeah. over the years. Yeah, I re but I remember 10 years ago. Oh, was it 10 years? It's 12 years ago. I played with the Vikings 12 years ago as a junior. Yeah, there it was very different. Wow. And the culture changed in the whole, whole Austria football, but the culture was because back in the day. Family. Yeah. Back in the day, did, wasn't you guys, wasn't the AFL allowed to have like six imports or something also, like that? Also, yeah, yeah. But after that, still, when we are allowed to have two, I think, no, three on the roster, two on offense or two on defense, something like that to change it. Yeah. But it, the, the, the the culture changed. It's it's It changed so much, especially the young guys who came up. It's, it's different. It's different. Yeah. It's, I feel like... I've been with the with my team before a few years ago, but the last two years I played somewhere else and I came back and it feels like a diff, a new team. Like Yeah, I'm, I can imagine, I'm, man. I'm like from I a different imagine. generation. I'm like, whoa, I know this is the Daniel Dragons and some faces I recognize and some I uh, used to play with are now coaches, but it's so different. I'm like, where yeah. am I? It's it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. It's so crazy. But I'm and I'm curious how the GFL 2 is gonna be. I have no idea how the GFL 2 is gonna be. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a crazy year for sure. I mean, it's gonna be a lot of adjustments. Um, uh, you know, with this COVID this COVID stuff going on, mm -hmm. you know, it's really hard to say. You know, it's 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 hard to speculate what's to what's to come. You know, and mm -hmm. we I think we've been doing that, and I think everybody in in the world that is that's going through this process of quarantining. Um, especially the strict quarantine like we are in in Europe right now. Um, I, I talk to guys back home and I mean, guys are still eating, going to party yeah. in some places. I mean, it's, it's wide open sometimes in America. Um, but I think that, you know, you know, it, it's, it's, it's going to be one of those years where, you know, you keep your fingers crossed every week, you know, yeah. and hope and pray that you have a game, hope and pray that they don't, they don't call a mandatory quarantine again and, and and all this lockdown stuff, um, because I'll be honest with you, we need it. You know, the GFL needs it um, as, as, a, as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that the the people and the players also need it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the fans and stuff. I mean, got, people are really, you know, going losing their minds in a sense. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it's only so much that someone can be staying isolated and, And you know we're we're people of habit, so you know when when we are now discoursed from that habit, not that habitual habit, you know we tend to create things in our minds mm. to try to block these out and then try to go another way. But yeah, it, it's only going to happen so long before people start to go crazy. Yeah. And I, I know it's just sports, but I mean people yeah. like myself, or in, in general, this is all I have. You know, mm -hmm. I mean sports is everything for me. Um, and I know a lot of guys that play this sport, you have to have some type of love for this game. Nobody's yeah. just going out there to want to get hit, you know, and, and, and possibly <laughs> hurt themselves. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you got to be borderline crazy and you got to be, you got to love this game. So, um, yeah, it's going to be very, very, uh, very, very exciting. It's very, very intriguing to see uh, what kind of goes on um, and how the GFL and other leagues handle this, um, mm. this whole deal this year. Do you guys have imports in the GFL too? Yeah, we do. We do. We do have imports. Um, I think we're allowed six imports. What? Four, four. I think so. I think I think it's either four or six imports. Are you counting as an import? No. Uh, no, I don't okay. count as an import. Okay. But that's a difference between. Well, I put it like this. 
I think we I do count as import on as far as ITCs like the okay. The, uh, okay. But I don't you know I'm not a player so I think we only get four uh, American imports and then we get like maybe two two other coaches for example mm. so that's our six right there mm. um, and then you get those EU guys that I think you may get four of those or got I think so roughly you get about. 10 to 12 guys that you can kind of import on your team in the GFL. Wow. Yeah. Oh, did you guys already brought in the imports and the Euro players? Well, we we have uh, our defensive imports already signed. Uh, we still are looking for our quarterback and uh, an athlete or receiver type of guy. Um, but yeah, we pretty much already have them, but we just don't have them here yet. So mm -hmm. that's going to be another task that we have to kind of do and that we have no clue how it works. You know what I mean? We have a, a, um, a coach that is, that is supposed to be flying over, um, but before he could fly over, he had to get vaccine, vaccinated and, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's almost taking him a month and a half extra just to get here. So mm -hmm. it's pretty, pretty, pretty wild right now how, how the times are. So you guys are just gonna play with two imports probably? No, hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. I hope that we get to get our imports in. Um, you know, if we, if not, you know, I think that our, our team is strong enough. I, we, we get a great attendance. Uh, the German guys here are definitely working hard. Um, so it's not like we wouldn't have a chance at winning, but definitely would love to have our imports here to kind of help strengthen us like I'm sure everyone else would too. Mm. 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 I see. I hope to. I hope to. What would yeah. be the next country you would like to see or maybe also coach yeah to coach not to see uh i would like to go to to either israel or africa um a, a country in africa somewhere um, israel. To, yeah you think they have a football team yeah they do have football wow. i've actually i've actually gotten uh contacted by a few for a few guys from there wow so yeah so i have um i have a, a quarterback Uh, training academy um, that I that I run is is called Precision Academy. Um, Precision academy. So I'll, I'll I'll drop that name real quick. You know, drop go it. to IG. All right, <laughs> Precision <laughs> underscore Academy. Precision underscore underscore Academy. Um, okay. and, and then you can follow me on IG. Um, that's my quarterback training page, um, as well as I do I run seven on sevens. Um, which is Kings of Europe 707. Um, you can find that also on IG at Kings of Europe underscore 7v7. Um, and yeah, you know, I also have one more to, to shout out. <laughs> It is a, it's a, a quarterback competition uh, by the name of Euro Elite 11. Uh, it's, a, it's a quarterback and receiver com competitive showcase um, where we'll have uh, college scouts, um, Europeans, European top coaches, And we already have like the top 30 quarterbacks um, signed to to ready to go um, from over six or seven countries. Um, so some top top ballers, uh, good quality athletes, um, and that is Euro Elite 11. And you can find us uh, on IG, Twitter, uh, Facebook, Euro? on all of these platforms. Ah, uh, now I found it. Okay, I'm gonna put everything also in the description box here. I'm gonna. Yeah, yeah, I mean, sure. Okay, Appreciate I that. see, I see. Okay, you specialized on quarterbacks. I know QB guru. I, I've read it before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so do you so have everybody trying to level up, man? Hit me up. <laughs> you guys have some? Do you have some German quarterback you train now? Are you the mentor for one quarterback? Yeah, I have. I train over. I maybe have like maybe over 20, 20 guys, 25 guys in my in my kennel, you know what I mean? I, you know, these are all dogs that I'm training, so I'll call them, you know, my kennel, but uh, I have like about 20, close to 20 guys. And that, and this is all over, this is not just Germany. I actually coach guys in Netherlands, Fran uh, uh, France, Spain, Germany, um, uh, Minsk, Belarus, um, Austria. I had a kid in Vienna actually really good kid Who is and it? Switzerland. So Switzerland. yeah, almost, all, almost all over. Yeah. Nice. Perfect. And who is the guy in Vienna? Uh, his name is, um, 
<laughs> His name is Dominic Dom, Dominic Dominic Claus. Okay. He plays for the Rangers for the Rangers U nineteen. Are you? Oh. Yeah, U nineteen. Young so, guy. Okay. Okay. Yeah, young guy. Young guy. It's yeah, like the guy. widest name ever. <laughs> <laughs> But shout out to him. <laughs> shout out my guy, Dominic, man. Dominic, Dominic is, uh, you know, he's a special guy, man. I mean, he's one of, you know, I, I have to share a story a bit. You know, I hope he doesn't mind this, but, you know, I, I think he can use this as an inspiration. But Dominic was had battle uh, cancer and he, he defeated it. And, um, you know, during the, during this battle, we actually were doing a lot of online sessions and, you know, it was times where he couldn't even, you know, get on, on online, but he battled it. He, he's come back um, and he's a special talent, man. I know he's going to do great things in the future. Uh, very, very high IQ football knowledge. And so, yeah, I, you know, I have to give my guy a shout out, man, even though he has a white ass name like that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. my guy, though. But he's a warrior already. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's a warrior, man. He's a warrior for sure. I uh, hope he will get a chance like the NFL pathway program or whatever. Yeah, or whatever. hopefully he can get a scholarship. You know, that's that's something. Oh, true, that, uh, there is also a scholarship. Yeah. True, that's true. Now, too, now with yeah. so many, yeah, exactly. Now guys are, you know, it's not like how it was when you know we was kind of growing oh, up, and you oh. definitely in Austria and stuff. You know, it really was no kind of help there to kind of get it was, uh, notarized. It was bad. The first yeah. day I told people I want to go to Canada to play because I have family in Canada, and I left. That was the day people started hating me. And then That's I played great. in the CGFL. I came back, I played here, and I'm like, I want to compete. I want to go to the CFL. So I went, but there are no CFL tryouts back then. Yeah. So I went yeah. to my cousin in Worcester, in Massachusetts. And then we took the car to Cleveland, and there I made my first tryout. Oh, I lost so much money. <laughs> those tryouts are like just ripping off something. It's not a proper tryout. Yeah. Just oh, one. yeah freaky guy and he's like yeah collecting the money and he thought he's just doing weird it's ass. so it's so backyard combine you know <laughs> it's like yeah. the cfl man the CFL, man i'm not gonna lie man i already know that's i tell people this all the time i said the cfl pay their contracts by having camp cfl camps literally yeah. like i we you know they're they're actually in season and they're just going around doing camps i'm like dude you got two more games left in the in the yeah. season how are you doing still doing camps you yeah. know what i mean yeah like it is it is it is because then extremely... you know a coach or a good scout would never be at the camp if you have a game you need that staff what <laughs> makes no there, sense it's a gimmick man it's a gimmick <laughs> and i was i was so glad that i didn't lose money on it because i had an agent at the time um, and my agent you know paid for a lot of the stuff like the travel and all that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. But I even told him, I said, you know what? Don't even waste no more money on this shit. Like yeah. this is, this isn't worked anything. You know, think they're, just, they're just blowing smoke up everybody. Yeah. But I, I prepared yeah. so bad for it. I really died. I don't know how many painkillers I I consumed at that at the time. <laughs> I paid like over three k euros just for that one trial. What? Yeah, with travel and everything and. Uh, Jeez. If my cousin wouldn't be in the states, I would take a hotel. It would even be more. And and the funny thing is, we went from Ma Massachusetts to Brooklyn to eat some African food. There. Yeah. <laughs> to sleep in the car in the Bronx for one night, and we watched the Manny and Paka, uh, Manny and Mayweather fight there. Oh uh, uh, yeah. In, in a basement. Yeah. It was some um some illegal stream i don't know in the basement with some africans then we slept in the car and then i don't know how many hours to cleveland oh my god so bad for nothing <laughs> oh my god man hey now that, that's something that the kids can fit that, that's something the kids can take the grind is real man the grind is real like seriously the grind is real you know because you know you invested in yourself and always yeah. we can we can laugh at it now but at that time you believed in yourself you better you put your money on the line and you better on yourself you know what yeah. i mean and, and that's what we got to do you know yeah. we have to take those chances and those risks but then hey we we we, we look back at it and like damn three hundred three thousand dollars you know yeah. the whole experience is, is a lifelong uh, experience yeah. you're never going to forget yeah, that right so yeah, it's, that's that's funny though, man. <laughs> wow, but it changed. But I'm happy. I'm happy that like it's it changed so much. It like Austria also like 
um, giving. I remember the NFL already had like um, they're allowing like every country to send two players to the draft or something like that, or the NFL yeah. had for a program, but they never did it before. Because the excuse was, we don't do it because if those camps start, we have season. So we are not going to send anyone. So there was mm. so much talent lost. I swear the last 10 years, there were so good players. One of my best friends who I trained was the main running back of the Vienna Vikings all years long. Mm -hmm. But he lost his, he, he just lost his passion for football. Yeah. He doesn't even yeah. watch it properly. He watches now basketball. <laughs> 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 you know that and that's something that's special though that's something that that's a good topic to kind of reach on it's just the the fact of like having a goal to obtain right and and you know we all want to reach that pinnacle you know of, of you know playing at the highest level and the, with the best of the best um you know and if it's not that reason if it's just for a check if it's just to be you know on a team and say i did this that's not good enough, right? We, I think yeah. all competitive people, we just really want to play against the best and we want to see how we can do against the best of the best and, and so forth and so on. Um, but, it, you know, the NFL pathway is something that's great. I think that it's it's, it's a great thing that they kind of implemented and we, nev we definitely need to uh, uh, figure out how we can do this more because even right now, they're not even getting all of the, the best talent, you know, to be honest mm. with you. It's, it's a lot of talented guys that are still sitting at home, didn't yeah. even get a phone call from these guys, you know, yeah. um, and, and really see uh, something stick, not just sell the hope side of it, but actually let's, you know, let's really get a quality guy and get them from the GFL or from the, yeah. you know, to the NFL or to the CFL, you know what yeah. I mean? And, and for me right now, I look at these, these programs as just, you know, just like a piece of cheese is hanging and stringing it in front of you. You know, you're not going to necessarily get there, but they're just going to hold it in front of you and give you that. But we definitely need to kind of get that and, and finally bridge that gap and connect the leagues because it's a lot, a lot of good football over here, you know, uh, especially back in the day with the NFL Europe, you know, they have that experience and people know the game, you know what I mean? Um, I was very, very uh, surprised to see and hear uh, the amount of people that actually were fans and actually came to the games and actually, you know, bought tickets. I mean, I was in Frankfurt, for example, and I know every place wasn't like Frankfurt, but I take this for example, because Frankfurt were, they were almost selling out 50,000, 60,000 seat stands, you know what I mean? And they have fans of all over the place, you know. Uh, still to this day, you can still see and feel that that feeling when you go to Frankfurt, um, what the Galaxy has done for them. So, you know, I think that, you know, where we're going towards now, um, and, and I'm very hopeful because, you know, as a, as a person of myself and doing business here in the football and trying to develop the game, um, you know, I see that others that are around and even America – uh, companies are trying to slowly but surely make their way across the pond. You know what I mean? So, you know, I look at it as a great thing, you know, and, and but we definitely, you know, I, I'll just say to the, to the home base, you know, the, 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 the European population to be more, a little bit more acceptive, you know what I mean? Embrace it a little bit more. And I mean it by, with the open mind, right. Um, it's, you know, because, that's like, for example, I always use this analogy. It's like us Americans, you know, if a European guy came over and, and was playing soccer, for example, mm -hmm. and we're like, nah, 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 that's not, you know, that's not it, you know, but Europe is by far probably one of the best countries and in, in regions of, of soccer, you know, we all know this, you know? So if they're telling us something, we maybe need to try to implement this, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, let's, let's not, you know, take down the pride, take down the ego. Let's do what's right for the betterment of this, of this, of this game. And let's do what's right to help the younger generation underneath us that, you know, that aspire to be uh, an NFL player. You know what I mean? Um, let's, let's make this way for them a little bit smoother. Let's make this pathway, you know, program with, for them from five years old, six years old, seven years old, you know, let's get these guys in it younger. Yeah. Um, you see guys playing soccer at two, three years old on teams, yeah. 
but you have no football organization that's, that has peewee or anything of that nature. I mean, it's a few teams, but they just don't do it, you know? So I, I definitely know that the future is bright in American football. It's definitely growing, but I just would like to say to just, just the true European people that are actually in this, embrace it, you know, be open-minded with, with the American imports that come here. Um, you know, that, that definitely have a, a key, uh, idea that, that can help, you know, the organization. Um, it's been times where I was trying to implement certain things that I felt like we could do to make the flow happen better. And they would just, you know, some teams just looked at me like, yeah, nah, that's, this is GFL. This is, this is Europe. We don't do that. I'm just like, dude, isn't this what you want to, you want to be better, right? You know, this yeah. is the stuff that we have to do. Uh, and one of those, and I'll just I'll say, say this, is off-season workout. Off-season workout. Off-season workout. Give us an off-season workout, please. Stop playing football all year round. Stop. You know, it's, it's a time and period where we don't need to wear shoulder pads and, 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 and bang people all the time and, and do all this stuff. We just need to get our hands in the ground, run, jump, squat, lift, all these types of things so that we can get our bodies prepared mm. um, to play the game that we love. Mm. We, ha we have it here. We have it here in Austria already. Oh. Off-season program. Yeah. They're big on it, yeah. Right now we have a new strength conditioning coach. Her name is Kati, shout out to Kati. And she even organized, we have like right now, we have two times training per week, uh, two times practice. Um, every Wednesday, I take my PCR test for the COVID. And, and she organized that we have Sunday's track training. And the oh, first wow. 40 minutes, because we still have, um, um, it's still no contact, but the first 40 minutes are only strength and conditioning, mostly. So it's, it's and the off season was That's good. That's good. Pure yeah. sprinting and prowler and everything. So I think it, it's getting the right way. Even yeah, totally. 10 years ago with Matthias Kovacev, one of the best coaches in Austria, but he, he has now offer with badminton and whatever. He's not in football anymore, but he also he was a term coach and he made everything, the off-season plans, in-season plans, his transition perfectly. But um, forget about Austria. Tell me more about your QB coaching. Tell me more about it. What can people expect? What are your goals? What are your goals with it? How do you want to grow it? Um, how should it look in future? Yeah, just tell me. Yeah, so uh, Precision Academy, uh, we originally was QBPA, was Quarterback Precision Academy. Um, I have now since expanded uh, to receivers and other skill positions. So we changed, mm -hmm. we dropped a QB uh, because I didn't want to leave any position out on the offensive side. Um, so, um, but basically my, my goal and my vision and why I created this um, was because I saw that, you know, what was needed was better coaching. And I wanted to have uh, a place where those guys looking to become better, they have a place to kind of come to and actually challenge themselves athletically and also develop themselves uh, in, a, in a proper way. Um, you know, being experienced over 27 years of, of, of playing this position, quarterback, and being on the offensive side of the ball, uh, my knowledge is very, is pretty high, I would like to say. And, um, you know, I, I thought that with developing the quarterback, um, so much more comes about, you know, better competition, better plays, so forth and so on. Um, you, you know, when I, when I first moved and I was watching some of the youth fo football, um, you know, I was, I remember watching some games and then you'll see a quarterback throw the ball and he couldn't throw the ball past four or five yards. You know, it was kind of wobbly and just all over the place. And I was just kind of like shocked. I was like, whoa, like, you know, they, they don't have any quarterbacks here. Mm -hmm. um, and so I started that. Um, we train online. I travel as well. Uh, I do one-on-one and also group training. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, right now it's been more so online um, because of the COVID. Um, and we have sessions anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes long. Uh, we will go over various things, techniques, uh, you know, as far as drop bags, uh, proper quarterback uh, throwing mechanics, uh, arm strength, uh, flexibility, um, mental preparation, um, philosophy, and also board work, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the X's and O's and everything. So we'll teach you how to read, recognize, 
uh, defenses, uh, what plays that, you know, that, that works against certain coverages. Uh, we, we'll talk about the, you know, even the box, you know what I mean? Uh, what techniques the D linemen are in. So you get the full uh, uh, collegiate, you know, professional style of, uh, mm. of coaching um, on the gridiron in that position. And uh, we, we coach uh, quarterbacks, receivers, running backs, and O-line. So everything in the, in the offense is sense. If you guys are interested, come over to Precision Academy. We'll, we'll hook you up with the, with the O-line coaches. We'll hook you up with the running back coaches. And, you know, I'm, I myself and another guy is, is, is coaching quarterbacks. And then we have also great receiver coaches. Mm. Um, so, you know, that's, that's the, the deal. Um, in the future, what I would love to do is definitely open up a facility um, so that we can definitely get get it in and, and you know, for as far as the weight room to having classroom settings and then that we can just kind of get everybody yeah. all in one place and, and really get better. So That would be yeah. sick. Jim, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can can't wait. Me. But in which country? Um, I, I'm looking I'm looking to do it in Germany. I'm looking really? Germany. But the taxes are real bad. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's... It's either there, it's either there or the Netherlands, um, because Netherlands. it has to be a centralized place somehow. True, true. Netherlands, okay. Amsterdam. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. I'm, at, I'm actually based in between the Netherlands and uh, Rostock, so I'm always back and forth. How come? Why Do I, did you find um, because, <laughs> because when I uh, started this, I was living and coaching in, 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 Rost in uh, Amsterdam. Okay. And the, um, of course, like you said, the taxes there, <laughs> I started my business there. So, you know, uh, they had, they had like the better, they had better, um, uh, what is legal, you know, yeah. suits to where I can start a business in the Netherlands. It's not so hard. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's why it's back and forth, I'm back and forth. I have a lot of fan, uh, not a fan base, but a lot of a uh, client base in, in Amsterdam. Perfect. Perfect. Sounds sick. Sounds sick. Let's see what happens the next three years. Maybe I can invest Thanks. some money in it. Yeah, yeah. Let me know. Let me know. <laughs> I know. I know being on your show can possibly help a little bit. You know what I mean? It will. <laughs> This is my second channel um, in English. It's not that big like my Austrian one. I mean, my German one. It's going to grow also, but I'm just going to do this like slow. Right. It will catch up anyways, I think. Yeah, so three sure. months and then and Instagram is also big, so we can do some 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 shout outs for you, for your academy, for your coaches. Thank yeah, you. let's see. Let's see. I'm, I'm very excited. I'm very excited how the GFL turns out, if we're going to have a season. But last, give me some tips for a few quarterbacks who, okay, it's, it's weird. If you want something, you should organize it and get the money. But still, give me some quarterback tips. What quarterbacks should take a look at in the weight room or what they can practice at home or if they don't have a coach or don't have access yeah, to totally. the facility. Um, some, a couple of tips uh, for the quarterbacks is, first of all, you know, I always tell them it's, it's 90% mental. You know, the, the game is, mm -hmm. it starts here. Um, and I believe that if you, if you believe something, if you put in that work and you prepare mentally, I think it all comes to you physically as well. Um, so that's one. Two would be to reach out, you know, ask for help. Um, look at YouTube. If you don't have, a, if you're not accessible to a quarterback coach, uh, uh, look at YouTube. If you don't have the money, go to YouTube. I mean, these things are, these channels are free that you can, you know, go. Um, but I will only say to do that And it only helped you get to a certain level. You know, at one point, you're going to definitely need to come to a guy like myself or others that are doing uh, a quarterback training and uh, to, to get that to get better. Um, um, I will also say with that, be careful who you train with um, and who's teaching you, because not every person that says they're a quarterback trainer or they're a quarterback know what the heck they're doing. I mean, I'm just being honest and, you know, it's, it's, it's a very, very, very hard. It's very hard for me to kind of sit back and watch some guys coaching. I'm like, whoa, stop now, you know, so be cautious of that, you know, do your history uh, uh, on that coach, see what his track record is. You know what I mean? Uh, see what, it, what kind of successes he's had. If he didn't have much success, then I don't know, you know, I'm not going to say he can't be a good coach, 
but I'm not too sure if he's going to know what it takes to be that good player, if that makes mm. sense. You know what I mean? Uh, so you want to get trained by guys that are, that are elite, um, that can also um, help you out with the verbiage of terminology so that you can understand it. Um, and that's key because if you can't understand it, then you're not going to be able to translate that to the field. Mm. Um, and, and, you know, as far as workout tips, I always tell guys that, you know, do dumbbell bench. All right. That's one tip that I would definitely give. Um, that was a tip that I learned in college and going to my professional league level was we don't bench press with a straight bar. Um, because, you know, for us, we need the flexibility of our shoulders and our full range of motion. When we have that straight bar, we really are isolated and we're constrained from only being able to come to here. We need to be able to get those dumbbells and we need to be able to exert the same amount of, 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 of energy on my right arm and my left. A lot of the times, if you're bench pressing, one, my left arm might be stronger than my right arm and then I'm just pushing like this. But when we have two 60 pound weights or kilo weights on us, then we're gonna exert the same amount of pressure and we get that full body workout and our flexibility and range of motion mm -hmm. is going to, to not be jeopardized. So um, those are those are a couple of tips that I can give right now. Um, if you want more, you gotta yeah. go to my link. <laughs> true, true. You go to my link, you know what I mean? Hit me up. Uh, uh, you can find that, you know what I mean? I give you my, my website as well, uh, but it's kingsofeuro.com. Um, if you find you any, find, um, if you still have, or if you're going to produce some highlight tapes of some players you have, I can put them after this video, some yeah. highlight from some players to give them also a yeah, shout yeah. out and to showcase their skill. So if you want. For sure, for sure. I got, a, I got an extra video. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you guys can see the work that, that, yeah. that, that been done. Yeah, man. so if you have something, just send it to me and I'm going to post it. I'm going to post okay. it. Okay. So thank you, coach, for your time. This Thanks was it for, for the me, first time. Uh, probably I'm going to have you for a second time or like a uh, gathering with some different coaches with Parker, Mosquito mm -hmm. and some different and then some random racist guy probably. Uh, no, yeah, saying. yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we, we're going to find something where like we have like a co coach round, uh, round table and talk about different topics and I ask you guys some different questions and everybody has his own opinion you come together yeah, that'll be great that'll be fun man. I'm gonna that'll organize fun, that in a few weeks and thank you coach again happy belated birthday God bless you and thank you for your time thank you thank you coach have a nice one right you too thank you thank you bye bye